Welcome to another exciting episode of Earth Check, the home where we tackle issues environmental. My name is Anne Masharia and today our focus is on community hooker. I know most of you might be wondering what is a community hooker, how does it operate and how do I care one? Now here to explain more is Wakina Mutembe who is an expert when it comes to community hooker. More than 80% of Kenya's urban dwellers, many of whom live in poor informal settlements, use charcoal made from wood as their primary source of energy. Their heavy dependence on wood for fuel has contributed to the rapid lake line of Kenya's forest. This has negative effects on the climate, local wildlife, water sources and forest dwellers. But with the innovation of a community cooker, there is a transformation of rubbish into energy with the help of a high temperature industrial cooker. Workers at the facility sort waste, including recyclable value materials, and incinerate the rest. The cooker's high combustion efficiency means far fewer pollutants are released than through open air burning. The pollution levels fall within the limits established by the National Environmental Management. The community cooker provides something they've never had before, affordable heat for cooking food and boiling water on a regular basis. People who use it save money on cold and benefit from inhaling less toxic particles from efficient cook stoves. Reducing trash creates a clean and more hygienic urban environment, while the facility also creates jobs. The cooker reduces expenses by encouraging users to share amenities and also acts as a social hub that encourages peaceful communication. The hope is to replicate similar projects, both regionally and internationally. The model will work in any environment that has high demand for heat and access to sufficient volumes of rubbish on a daily basis. So my name is Wakina Mutembe. I manage the Community Cooker Foundation, which um, basically promotes the use of community cookers as an alternative to charcoal and firewood and as a waste management technology. Um, so a community cooker is a waste to energy technology mm -hmm. that burns rubbish um, environmentally correctly to generate heat energy for cooking, baking and heating water. Mm -hmm. So the world technology has come from the basics of burning rubbish normally, yeah. which would happen in your backyard. Mm -hmm. And when you burn rubbish in your backyard, you'd burn rubbish at approximately 250 degrees centigrade which obviously is in complete combustion. So you remain with a lot of unburnt rubbish yeah. and there's a lot of black smoke that has a lot of toxins. Mm -hmm. So the community cooker tries to attain at least 880 degrees centigrade to burn rubbish. At this point, you're able to eliminate most toxic gases. That includes carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxides. And from there on, depending on, I mean, with all the amount of heat we're getting, we would like to utilize this heat to the best possible way. Yeah. So, uh, what kind of waste are you having? Like, you know, we have some different type of waste. We have uh, the hazardous, organic. What specific kind of waste do you use? One, um, we use all kinds of waste apart from rubber, glass, and metal. That includes plastics, that includes um, cloth, that includes cotton. To give you a background on rubbish, yeah. when you collect rubbish, say for example from, your, from households, from offices, from schools, um, you get biodegradable waste and you also get um, other kinds of rubbish. So the community cooker's agenda is to burn what no one else wants. A good example is when you, when you collect rubbish, you can separate rubbish into 47 categories. Out of the 47 categories, only two categories have no use to be recycled, yeah. which is diapers and completely dilapidated plastic. Yeah. If you look at the degradable waste, it can be used to generate biogas or manure. If you look at plastics, they can be recycled to make other kinds of items. Now, diapers, no one has found a way to use diapers. Exactly. So as long as they're well aerated and they have dried, then they can be used in a community cooker to burn. Yes. Okay. And... Uh, is there something like sorting? Because when you talk of burning waste, probably yeah. there's that process of, so of what happens. So, for example, if when, when you're in your house, you some people try to segregate their rubbish from yeah. the households, yeah. but not many people do that. Yeah. So obviously you'll find biodegradable waste, plastic diapers, everything in the same kind of dustbin. Mm -hmm. So what we do, what we encourage people to do, is to separate this rubbish at the source. Mm -hmm. If they can't, when it comes to a community cooker, I'll show you a rubbish rack later as I explain the cooker to you. Mm -hmm. At this point, they sort the rubbish from the rack. Okay. Then you want to combine as many types of rubbish as possible. Oh, yeah. 
that means you've already removed rubber, mm -hmm. glass, and metal. Yeah. So the remaining rubbish, you want to mix paper, you want to mix plastic, you want to mix cloth, all in the same bundle of rubbish. I'll show you bundles later. Yeah. So that when you put the rubbish inside, the calorific value you're getting is quite a variety. Yeah. yeah? So yeah. you don't just burn paper by itself. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you know, this is a, a nice idea, uh, but what was the need? What, what exactly did you see for you to come up with such a noble idea? First of all, the community cooker is an idea of Planning System Services okay. Limited, mm -hmm. which is an architectural company mm -hmm. that designs uh, buildings and houses all over Africa yeah. and Europe. So what it does is, what happened is the, the former chairman of Planning System Services, called Jim Archer, who was born and raised on Luakabeta Road, mm -hmm. realized that the river was getting extremely dirty. Okay. And when he was a child, he's currently 81, mm -hmm. when he was a child, the river was quite clean. So he kept wondering, this was in the early 90s really, he kept wondering how do I, how do I help clean a place? I mean, of course you can encourage neighborhoods to collect rubbish. Yes. But what, how do they benefit from it? So he realized he has to make rubbish a valuable commodity. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can get rid of rubbish is by incinerating it or burying it. But when we bury it, obviously, you're going to have to make a lot of places to bury it in future. Mm -hmm. So at that point, mm -hmm. he, he, he thought, if I burn rubbish, I'm going to generate heat energy. Okay. And that heat energy, if it could at least cook, maybe bake and at least heat water, then obviously you have made a valuable commodity out of rubbish. Yeah. So the tricky part was coming up with the technology. The one we're looking at right now is a Mark 5. So we've had five other prototypes we've been looking at. Mm -hmm. And the first one was done in 2008. Mm -hmm. So the main process was how do we attain 880 degrees centigrade? Okay. Be because it would be useless for, for, for us to burn rubbish if we are going to emit toxic gases. Yes. So we had to attain the right temperatures for WHO standards for developing countries. Yeah. We had to build a prototype and pilot it mm -hmm. and be sure that it's meeting the standards it's supposed to meet. Mm -hmm. And that is what, where we got to in 2015. Okay. Yeah. So before we go to the process of what happens from sorting and uh, from, uh, from the fire itself and how the cooking is happening, yeah. what are the advantages of this? To probably could explain it to, our, to an audience or to yeah. our audience, mm -hmm. what exactly are the advantages of a community cooker? Of a community cooker. Yeah. One, the community cooker is a responsible waste management technology. Yeah. Two, it is an appropriate technology. Yeah. It means it's a renewable, it uses renewable material. Yeah. Three, um, it produces cheap energy. I mean, how many places are you going to get um, the kind of heat energy you get from a community cooker mm -hmm. spending 300 shillings a month? And when I say 300 shillings a month, you only, use, you only need water. It could be drain water. Mm -hmm. It could be any kind of water and used engine oil. So say, for example, in our school where they already have buses, they don't need to buy used engine oil. Mm -hmm. So five liters of used engine oil only stays for a month mm -hmm. and maybe to you might be wondering now what the engine oil in the water is for mm -hmm. so for us to attain above 880 degrees centigrade we have to accelerate the heat so how we do that is by using two drops of water and use engine oil on a very hot plate yeah. this disintegrates the hydrogen and oxygen in water so the oxygen boosts the temperatures and hydrogen you know spreads fire mm -hmm. 10 times faster than oxygen. Yes. So by that, you're able to attain the 880 degrees centigrade. The rubbish, actually, you could earn an income from rubbish. Exactly. People are paying money every day from the households for the rubbish to be collected. Mm -hmm. So the rubbish is free or maybe at a profit for you. Yeah. yeah. So you, this is a community cooker, meaning yeah. there are many people involved. Yes. Right. So does it mean that maintaining it needs some different people to do it or what happens? Really, the, the concept behind the community cooker and the word community mm -hmm. is to address the community's rubbish. Yeah, okay. I mean, to explain that the community cooker burns approximately a quarter a ton of rubbish for every eight to 12 hours. A school cannot produce a quarter a ton of rubbish. It has to be a community. A community mm -hmm. could be a few schools, yeah. a few households, a few health centers, mm -hmm. yeah? 
also to for the community part the community cooker was deliberately designed to be labor intensive and that's for the purpose of creating employment that's again bringing people together as a community for maintenance um, out of experience on the years we've worked on the community cooker we have realized that it's more beneficial and more useful if the cooker is managed by an institution that already has a working management structure per se that's for the reason that if, for example, they need to do some maintenance, from the money they're saving for not using charcoal and firewood could be put together for maintenance in future, for repairs in future, you know, okay. that kind of thing. Behind me is an example of a community cooker. How it operates, the process, is exactly what most of you might be asking yourself. But this will be answered.